Hey, what's going on? It's Rick here. And today I'm gonna to wrap things up on the SVS PB1000 and SVS PB2000 subwoofers. If you guys have been watching my videos, you may have seen me unbox both the PB1000 and the 2000 recently. So if you wanna see kind of real specifics, what you get in the box and those subs up close, go check out those two videos because that's where I've got it. Really today is more about just an average guy's take on both subs, which one I'm keeping, and then just kind of my final recommendation on these subs you know again I've said it before I'll say it again I am NOT an audiophile by any means so consider this video more of you know your average Joe's take on these subs and there are some pretty startling conclusions that I've come to uh, that have opened my eyes to the world of subwoofers so without further ado I'm gonna take the camera off the tripod I'm gonna show you the SVS PB1000 and 2000 side by side one final time we'll come back I'll talk about my final impression conclusions and recommendations let's have a look so here they are side by side we've got the PB1000 on the left and the PB2000 on the right I do want to mention real quick before I get into this, svssound.com is the website. Check them out because not only do they sell subwoofers, but they sell speakers, accessories, and other things as well. So check them out. And they sell more than just these two subs that you're looking at. They sell ported subs, sealed subs, cylinder subs, and uh, these are just the lower to mid-range sub in the ported category. They sell some higher end ones as well. Now, the PB1000 right here on the left has a 10 inch speaker with a 3.5 inch port on it. As far as wattage goes, it's coming in at 300 watts RMS, peaking out at 700 watts. Now, the PB2000 has a 12 inch speaker. You can kind of see it through the mesh metal grill here. Same thing with that port there down in the bottom left. That is a four inch port. And this one comes in at 500 watts RMS, peaking out at 1100 watts. Other notable differences on the front that you're gonna see on the left, the PB1000 has kind of a mesh fabric-y type grill that is removable. On the right, the PB2000 has a metal grill that is also removable. I'm not going to remove them here. I've got that in my unboxing video of these two speakers, so you can check that out. Both of these cabinets are kind of a ash wood grain type look to it. And if you notice, my Pioneer speakers over here match these really well for the look. So you're going to notice a height difference definitely in the PB2000 over the 1000. Let me go ahead and spin the camera to the side. We'll take a look at it and then we'll also look at the back. There they are side by side. The subwoofer that you're looking at closest to the camera is the PB1000. Behind it is the PB2000. You can see the 2000 peaks up just a little bit higher than the PB1000. And as I spin the camera around, I'm going to try to catch the uh, long ways kind of view of these two subs so you can get an idea for what we're talking about here as well. PB2000 on the left, PB1000 on the right. So you can see in length, it's definitely longer. And then that speaker grill kind of arches outward on the PB2000 as well. Let's go ahead and take a look at the back of these subwoofers. So this is the back of the PB2000 and pretty simple if uh, you ask me. We've got a input for your power cable. You've got your on off switch. You've got your inputs and your outputs here. You also have a trigger input as well as an auto standby switch. You can also flick that to on. There's your low pass filter. You've got your phase control as well as your volume. And that's all there is to the PB2000. Now, moving over to the back of the PB1000, there's just really one notable difference here. First off, there's your power connector. You've got your on off switch. Here's what the difference is. You've got these uh, speaker level inputs so you can connect in uh, your speaker wires into this and that's really the difference that you don't get on the PB2000. You've got your input and your outputs, you've got your trigger input, you've got your auto standby switch and then your low pass filter, your phase and your volume. So really that is the only difference that we're talking about on the back side of the PB2000 versus the PB1000. 
So there you have it. That is my comparison of the PB1000 and PB2000 subwoofers. As for me, I'm keeping the PB2000 and I'll be sending back the 1000. There's nothing wrong with it. It is an outstanding sub. My decision to keep the 2000 is purely based on the fact that I don't see myself buying another sub for quite some time. So I wanted to future proof a little bit, but I will also tell you this is that for me, I could tell just a slight difference in the PB2000 that made it worth keeping that one and doing the upgraded uh, price on it. Remember, it's 300 more than the 1000, uh, but it reaches a little bit lower in the frequency. And for example, when I watched Wally on Blu-ray, the scene where the rocket ship drops down and the thrusters are firing, PB1000 rocked my room. PB2000 actually did it even more. It was, it was more like an experience. You could feel the slight shaking of the ground. And as the thrusters came further down, it really got intense. And I guess that's what I want to say about these subs is, you know, coming into this, I didn't know a whole lot about subwoofers in general. I just thought that they added bass. And I read online, somebody once said, you know, the subwoofers that you pick up at a local retail box store, pretty much not really subs. They're more glorified boom boxes. And I'll tell you, before I picked up this sub, I had a sub that was included in a home theater in a box. And it really muddied out my audio. So I'd watch television and I could hear the bass. Woo, woo, woo. And even my wife said, you know, when you hooked up the new sub, I could totally hear the audio so much clearer and cleaner, especially at low volumes. And that's because it's such a clean sound and it doesn't distort and it's really coming on only when it needs to. So, man, I learned a lot in this process. And I got to tell you, if you want to transform your home audio experience from maybe just a sound experience to complete sensory experience, go with one of these subs because it really makes a difference. And like I said, just that Wally scene alone, and I can't wait to go through my library of movies and start watching them. It, it really makes you feel like you're there. It's pretty amazing. And video games, whole nother story. As I said, I could go on and on about this. And you know, the other thing I'm going to mention is check out svssound.com because they've got a whole slew of products, speakers, subwoofers, accessories, and they'll help you determine what's going to work best for your needs. You got to consider things like, are you going to watch movies most of the time? Is it music most of the time? It might make sense to go with the sub that's sealed versus ported. And then as far as size go, well, you got to consider what kind of room are you putting it in? Is it a sealed off room? For example, my room, it's maybe 18 by 18, uh, if that. And the height from floor to ceiling is maybe eight, maybe nine feet max. The 1000 worked great in this room. But again, I wanted to keep the 2000 just because I don't see myself buying another one of these for quite some time. Better to have a little bit more power than, you know, right on the edge. So uh, overall, very pleased. Final thing I'll say about SVS is they do something that I haven't seen from anybody else. And that's twofold here. Number one, you pick up a sub or uh, whatever it is from them. You get 45 days. Try it in home. Nothing is out of your pocket. I mean, basically, they will charge you, of course, for that. But if within 45 days you don't like it, contact them they will pay the shipping back. You've got to keep the box that the speaker came in, obviously. Package it up. Shipping is on them, not on you. And they'll credit you back your full amount to however you paid for it. So that's pretty outstanding. And the other thing is within a year. So if you purchase one of these things within a year and you decide, you know what, I want to upgrade, you can do it. Contact them. You will, in those instances, pay the shipping back, but they'll credit the full amount to your account uh, so that you can upgrade your speaker. So let's say you got the PB2000 for $799, and eight months from now, you want to upgrade. Contact them, pay the shipping back. They will credit your SVS account $800 or $799, and you can pay the additional cost to get the latest and greatest. So pretty cool stuff there. Um, that's my take on these subs outstanding. Really, it has transformed my video game playing to just audio to a full-on experience. I can't wait to play Titanfall with these subs, man. It is going to be amazing. Um, and then just movies and television is, is outstanding. So I wholeheartedly recommend these. Perfect five out of five on either one of these guys. Um, and as I say, if you head on over to SVS Sound, tell them Metagamer sent you. So uh, I will catch you guys next time. As always, if you have questions, feel free to hit me up. Best ways on Twitter at Metagamers. And I'll catch you next time. Take care, everybody, and have fun.